Who's watching you in the backyard there, John Hickey? Uh, nobody. <laughs> well, stay healthy and hydrated, young man. Got to do my best out here. Yeah, thankfully, I'm uh, not doing the grueling work that some of our DP. W crews are doing now. I'm not a roofer. I'm not a painter either. I mean, there's a lot of jobs that, boy, you're out there in the broiling sun all day long. I don't envy you. And uh, staying hydrated, a uh, good way to beat the heat, taking some breaks, finding some shade whenever you can. Got another day when we're doing that tomorrow. But thankfully, our heat is going to be leaving as we go into the upcoming weekend. But our rain chances by then, they're going up. I want to share some great viewer photos with you. Uh, we had a brilliantly clear sky last night and very early this morning, Eileen beat sunrise capturing this photo of our moon that's getting ready to head into a waning crescent phase. So big thanks to Eileen from Beach Lake of capturing the moon early this morning. A brilliantly crisp photo here, so big thanks. Also this one from Maggie. This is up in Mountain Lake in Bradford County of our sunrise this morning through some of the fog that we had in some locales. Nice shot there. So thanks to all of you who have been sending in your great photos. We love to share them here on the air. Got up to 90 degrees today in this backyard, 92 Williamsport. So the heat wave continues in central Pennsylvania. We got real close here, getting up to 89 yesterday, but no official heat wave but it's still hot. Today's 90 puts us at seven days this year with temperatures at 90 degrees or hotter, but no official heat waves in 2023. And it would appear that we just won't get one. And well, that suits me just fine. Maybe it does for you too. Temperatures upper 70s as you get out of some of the valleys. In the valleys though, there is some heat. I think that 91 in Archibald is probably uh, an errant observation. 75 in Lopez, got some 80s as you head out into the central Susquehanna Valley. Now, much like the last few nights, it'll be very stuffy and uncomfortable tonight. It'll be mostly clear, but with high humidity, temperatures having a hard time dropping much below 70 degrees. If we keep the clear sky going into tomorrow morning, great opportunity to see the International Space Station fly over. We talked about this in this week's Skywatch 16. It happens shortly before a quarter of six tomorrow morning and a brilliant pass at that. It'll last seven minutes. It's basically going to go directly overhead. There's another opportunity to see it at five o'clock sharp on Friday morning. That one lasts five minutes. If you're not a super early riser and you want to wait for some evening passes, looks like we have some of those coming up later in the weekend and into next week. We have a slow moving system. We've been talking about this all week and uh, the fact that it's slow moving has benefited us. It's kept us dry a lot of the week. We've enjoyed some hot temperatures, but now the slow moving system is slowly moving in and it will be over our area for a few days because it is so slow moving. So with that in mind, we'll have the chance for some storms to fire up tomorrow afternoon. So tomorrow is the last day of the real high heat, but it is not the last day that we'll be dealing with some high humidity. The storms tomorrow from the Storm Prediction Center, level two out of five risk for severe weather. Not so sure I buy that. I think the bigger concern starting tomorrow will be for these real drenching storms to be kind of popping up in the next several afternoons. And if some of the real drenchers go over some of the same areas, that could start to raise the uh, concerns for some flash flooding. So just want to give you an idea of what the radar might look like tomorrow. You can see things are quiet in the morning, but after two, three o'clock, that risk for storm starts to increase and uh, we'll find a scattering of storms throughout a lot of tomorrow afternoon. And I think that continues into the early part of the evening. And there are more storm chances to go for Friday, Saturday, possibly into Sunday too. So we'll have to keep this in mind, of course, with a lot of the high school college football games going on Friday, Saturday, and some of that may be impacted by some of these storms. So something to keep in mind. I think the risk for storms starts to go down on Sunday, not to say that it stays dry, but I just think Friday, Saturday, the most widespread storm activity, and then things hopefully turning a little bit more dry going into next week. But because though it is just so humid, a lot of moisture to work with for these storms, so they could be some real gully washers. Just something to keep in mind as we dodge drops together over the next several days, Scott. Well, as long as we're in it together, John. That's right. It's a team effort. Thank you, sir.